All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the CTL replay cast. This week, me and my good friend Snoopy are going to be casting our week two of the CTL. So this was a match between us, Sonic Aftermath, and SE Swarm. Yep, this is uh, week two, so this should be great. Yeah, so of course we are in week three. Week three is concluding now. We got our last match happening uh, tomorrow, actually. But um, this was a tough week for us, and um, <laughs> I know a lot of the SC Swarm players are in the chat. At least a couple were asking me, trying to get into the cast. So it's cool to see that they're here, too. We can watch it with them and uh, hopefully learn something. Awesome. All right, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, it looks like we've got your audio and my audio, so everything is good. Awesome. Maybe not the game sound, though. We'll see. Fingers crossed. I don't know. Okay. All right. So, our first match is going to be, as is customary, we're going to be going lowest to highest in rank. So, our first match is going to be the 3,000... Oh, sorry. Wait. Three, two, three, four, and under, I believe. Um, replace the gold set, um, and it's going to be Drujo versus Scientist. Um, let's see. So, yeah, this is uh, I think Drujo is one of our newer players or recent players, and this is like I think his first Chobo team league uh season i guess so so far he's been doing pretty well i think yeah that's right he um we recruited him a few weeks ago uh right before the start of the ctl season he was looking to join a team and he's picking up um picking up the reins in this slot from axis for the last couple seasons and uh, he's been doing really good um not too far under the mmr limit so he has a pretty good advantage in this slot for a lot of the gold players this slot's basically become a, a buff low platinum slot pretty much instead of a gold slot uh, which is good to be because honest. oh sorry go, oh, ahead. go ahead no go ahead um it's tough to get gold so i really like this slot how it works because in starcraft 2 now the way it works is players aren't in gold for very long at all so it just makes it a headache to coordinate the gold slot yeah, I was about to just say the same thing. Like, we don't have a lot of goals, I don't think, in Psionic Aftermath. So, pretty nice to have someone in that range so we can send in play. Exactly. All right, for set number one, the opposing side for SE Swarm, it's the Purple Zerg Scientist. And spawning at the bottom right, representing a Psionic Aftermath. It is Juho. How you been, Snoopy? It's been a while since we've casted. Been everything been good? <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Um, apparently, uh, today was the day where I decided to just like mass ladder, <laughs> and I haven't I haven't played a lot recently, like in terms of one v one. Like I play like you know team games, maybe some custom games, but. Uh, for the most part, I, I've not 1v1 ladder for a really long time. So today I had some nice, good amount of games. I think like 30 games played. So nice. really, yeah, trying try to get the back into the swing of things, you know? Yeah, that's good. Been, I mean, I pretty much exactly the same thing for me tomorrow. Was back, had some vacation, but was away from a working computer. So I was forced to take a break from StarCraft for we can half and it's good to be back good to be back casting as well uh was the vacation went, uh, nice it was went awesome well? had a lot of fun was in florida with my cousins um very hot it was not ex it was extremely hot there 
which yeah. makes sense because it's closer to the equator. But for some reason, <laughs> I didn't. I'm yeah. like, it's hotter here, really. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, right. we've got a ZVZ here, and it seems like we've got pretty much mirror builds. Yeah, except we have a spine crawler coming up from scientists, so looks like oh. he's gonna go safer. Actually, he doesn't even have a assimilator, so. He's just gonna mainly rely on queens and spine crawlers to defend and probably will transition to roaches or something. Yeah. And it looks like Drujo's Ling Speed. Yeah, he's going for Ling Speed. And Scientist with the Spine Crawler. Now I actually I don't mind this from Scientist, you know. Getting the spine crawler is okay. Um getting it blind though, I'm not sure if I like. Um if you have an overlord at the outside of the base of Yurjo, then you can wait to s see if you need a spine crawler until later, and then you can plop it down right when you see the army move out, and then you don't have to waste a spine crawler unnecessarily, p potentially. But um, this might work out okay for him, but it looks like Yurjo is going to be going f uh, pretty aggressive, getting a much faster baneling nest, whereas Scientist might be going for that roach tech with the Evos. Yeah, I'm not actually sure if this is really um a good play or in terms of build order on this map because if you look at the third base um and the, even the fourth base as well it's kind of hard to maneuver back and forth so it's going to take a while for him to actually scientists uh, i'm referring to um it, it might take him a little while to get the third base as uh lings you know you can pretty much run across the map and just deny it over and over yeah definitely that third is so hard to take on Lost and found. And looks like we got um, faster upgrades for Jojo as well. He's going to be getting his um, melee attack a bit faster. Even though the Evos were just used for the wall. And a Roach Horn, a later Roach Horn going down for Jojo. So these players, they're pretty close. Um... Except for drones. Drujo is way ahead in drones. I think scientists cut a bunch to try to get that quicker wall with the heavy queens. But I'm not sure why he cuts so many. Oh, um... It looks like both players have not decided to get a third base yet. Which is kind of late, I think. Oh, actually, no. Drujo just got his third base. So, uh, pretty good timing for Drujo. In terms of compared to his opponent at least and uh I, I would like to see scientists you know with the queens and with the roach tech you know it's going to be really important to start spreading creep towards your opponent's base mm. that allows the uh, roaches to move to, towards the your opponent much quicker and also uh also connect to the uh, third and fourth base so you can maneuver the roaches around easily uh, more easily yeah that's true i mean he invested a bunch into these queens just blind and if you're going to have them, you need to make use to them. Get that creep spread. So it looks like Drew, Drew, Drew Ho, Drew Joe, I guess. Um, Silent G, something like that. And it's <laughs> going for Gleal reconstruction, um, roach speed, much faster. So even though scientists went for some earlier um, wall and defensive with queens, uh, Drew. Drujo might be able to still make something happen because he has faster upgrades and um, will have roach speed much quicker. Yeah, and the scary part is that Drujo doesn't even have an overlord like at least near the ramp uh, or near the natural of um, scientists. There is one that's kind of close, but it doesn't spot. It. Like if Drujo decides to, no, not Drujo, a scientist decides to maneuver his roaches to the side, you wouldn't even see like a big roach attack coming. Um, but it looks like Juho with his speedlings will go across the map to get some harassment or some scouting done. Um, actually, no, he's making mm. banelings here. If he's going to go uh. for some sort of a bust here, it's possible. Yeah, he's got the speed overlord going to come in, scout out the um, front there. And Scientist's third is so late. This is actually pretty insane. It uh, looks like Juho is just going to be able to... Um, he's sub up. 30 supply because he has a third base now even though it doesn't have that many drones he can get the extra larvae and is going to be way ahead in army supply and might go in for a pretty good ravager bane bust 
Yeah, but the but again, so scientists did delay the door in favor of all the upgrades. So we'll see if the upgrade comes into play during the battle. Um, but you know, there is a certain point where the, if the army, if the back row of Druho gets out of control, then Druho can just out macro him and get a much bigger army, and the upgrades will be meaningless in the fight. Mm -hmm. Druho also picking off the overlord there. Nice pickup with the queens. And, yeah, like you said, um, also with a speed overlord scouting everything here, he knows what's going on, and it looks like a Hydralis Den is going to be his follow-up. It looks like both players are actually going for a Hydralis Den. Hmm. So, yeah, we're going to be seeing a Roach Hydra composition here. And, all right, your third base just got done by scientists, and you are going to go try to get some damage done. Oh, Oh, he should have ate those brains. He has to might go down. Will he get it? Oh, I think he will barely oh, just that's get it. So clutch. Oh, that is so rough. I mean, losing your third like that. Now, Drudo doesn't need to bleed these roaches here. That's a mistake. Um, but the rush distance is pretty far. A uh, scientist looks like he knows that he has to try to make something happen. But it looks like there will be enough larvae at home to get enough roaches out to defend the third I think he should be able to do it especially because on lost and found there is a nice choke at the third mm -hmm. um, Juho now just needs to make only army if he can survive this he will be uh, pretty ahead I think uh, assuming that he has the third and scientist has yet to take it and here we go roaches going in a uh, little bit of awkward engagement there but a lot of ro ravages and roaches for Juho and he will be able to push his back yeah, the Bile is whiffing there, but the important part was they shoot everything away. He's up about 40 supply, or 30, and yeah, Drudo's just going to throw down some spines at the third, and he's going to be very happy with his position. Uh, it's un important to note as well that the upgrades will soon be in favor of Drudo. His uh, plus two is about to be done. Um, so, oh no, actually, plus one. Um, so he'll be one, 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 while scientist is two, uh, one, one. So he will have Ajuha will have a timing where he his roaches will be stronger. And I would like to see him even get a fourth base right now. He defended against the attack. He did take down the third. So he should be, I guess, assuming that scientist is throwing down his third. So this allow him time to throw down his fourth without knowing that he won't get attacked anytime soon. Yeah, Druho has quite a supply lead, and it looks like... Okay, now there is an Overlord that will spot this. A scientist needs to get in a good position at the Concave of the Third. Otherwise, that looks like he's moving over now. Um, that will be tough for Druho to attack into, even with a supply lead. He might still try, though. Picking off some Overlords nice with the Ravagers. And just going to start chipping away at these rocks. Oh, gonna do, oh wait, Juho gonna go ahead and engage this. Dodging the Biles for the most part, but he's diving in way too far here. That was way too aggressive. And now Druho has a concave of his own. Um still missing the Biles, but honestly just zoning the force out. This third is in a lot of danger of falling. The army supply is pretty even. But Ravagers are really cost-effective if they land the Biles, and that might be all she wrote for this game if this third falls right here. Yeah, Biles are going to go down here, um, sealing the retreat path, getting a few units, and the third's going to fall, and that's pretty much it. Drew could lose his entire army, and the game would still be over here. And he has a lot of resource bank, too, so he can remax pretty... Do, uh, fat quickly. Ninja base of scientists tried to throw one down. Drew is going to have none of that. Snipes it. And yeah, he's already Not... pretty much mined out the main. Yeah, pretty much. Looks like scientist is still trying to press forward, but uh, with such an inferior army is not what she can do. Yeah, it seems like, I think scientists, I mean, not scientists, uh, Druho is 
in a pretty decent position right now. He's uh, 164 to 141 supply here. Drone worker count 52 to 35. So he, he's feeling really comfortable in the, at this point. All he needs to do is just make sure he can uh, doesn't let the scientists get back into the game by making it a 200 versus 200 army you know fight. Because once that happens, then anything can happen. And it looks like he's ready to attack here. Yeah, okay. Scientist just allowed himself to be backed into a position of the wall. The biles are oh, going to... Oh, no. Oh, those biles were so clutch. <laughs> and just going to be streaming forward. There's not enough purple here. Druho. Queen's coming in. Going to push this back for now, though. But still, the rematch potential is so great. Yeah, he even took down the Roach Warren of Scientist during that fight, so... All that all scientists can make is hydras at this point. Wow, it, as we see in the production tab, 11 roaches and 19 hydras for Druho on the way. Yeah, so the reinforcements here are going to push this back. It looks like he's going to lose a few hydras here. Um, not the best, but with a remax here. Not remax, I'm saying remax. I'm not even close to being maxed. But <laughs> with reinforcements coming in. Now this will seesaw back the other way. Um, I guess one thing to think about here is with scientists, he chose just to go hydras here. But if you know you're behind, I think the better choice is to go for something either ravagers or lurkers. Um, better units to try to win your way back into a game. Just going straight roach hydra isn't great if you're behind. If you're pretty close and you feel pretty confident, then yeah, it can work. But you really need something that can get some additional damage, like Lurkers or um, uh, Ravagers, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Lurkers are great comeback units. They can siege up a position. I think if he went Lurkers, he could have had, I mean, had that third sealed. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, instead, he's going to go for an infestation pit. So maybe he's looking for, I guess, hive tech, but it looks like we actually might have a base rate going on here as both armies kind of going across the map, dodging each other. Oh, but actually, Struho's going to go ahead and pull his whole army back. I'm not sure about this. I think he would have been better if he can could have just base traded. it. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is all right he could have just i think just forfeited the third base gone into the third of scientists and then um rallied the remaxes and then attacked the attacked the army of scientists um and actually drew is being maybe a little bit overconfident here or maybe not oh wow <laughs> that was a lot of uh, move commanding hydras there <laughs> yeah from both players <laughs> yeah. all right gg drew is gonna go ahead and take Game one here. So well done by Drew. I think he's been perfect so far. I think he won his first week, and but right now he just won the second week. So congrats to Juho. Yeah, I mean, really happy with how he's been doing. Um, been macroing really good for a mid-plat player. Um, you know, not banking a ton of minerals. Pretty wise with his larva, and, you know been doing some solid macro games as well so that's really cool to see yeah so i also wanted to point out that it was pretty cool to see Druho get some overlord speed you don't actually i, don't, I mean i don't see that often in zvz mm -hmm. so that allowed him to get some good scouting and yeah really well done well done by Druho there yeah i think there's not too many reasons to not get overlord speed in a matchup um it's so good it's so versatile uh, you can scout a ton. It saves you from losing overlords more. And for the low commitment, what is it, like 100, 100? It's so versatile and can um, really turn the tide in some games. Mm -hmm. You know, with getting... Especially since... Oh, go ahead. Go... Sorry. Go ahead. You're probably going to finish my point anyways. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, um, especially since in the, you know, as Zerg, your, your, your play style... It's more reactionary, so getting scouting, constant scouting, that allows you to actually react constantly to your opponent. Mm, yeah, exactly. Another thing also, Jujo, um, 
took out a lot of overlords with the Biles and Queens as well. That's something that some players forget about, um, you know, harassing the overlords when you can. So that's good as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. But for game number two, Sonic Aftermath is up 1-0. But the Sonic Aftermath player for set number two is the Red Zerg, Arioch. And spawning at the top right, we have our Green Terran representing CS SC Storm. It is Razius. The lone Terran player on SC Swarm. <laughs> or in this lineup, at least. <laughs> uh, that is surprising. Maybe he just converted him himself. Maybe he used to be a Zerg and just, like, had an identity crisis and just changed to Terran. <laughs> He's like, I saw Mario play. I I'm, I'm inspired to be Terran. Right, exactly. Okay, so this is a 14 hatch. Um, that seems a bit greedy. I don't know if you have any thoughts. Mm, yeah, I'm not sure. I guess... Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I guess maybe he has something up his sleeve, but... We'll see. Well, with maps that have the in-base in -base pocket expansion, a lot of times, if you go for the earlier expansion at the traditionally more exposed one, and then you defend that, then you can often get a really quick three bases. Um, there's a lot of maps like that, but that's pretty um, pretty common to see. Now, Razius is going for Marine first instead of Reaper, which is interesting. Um, and a fast CC as well. Hmm. I guess he's going to go ahead and get some fast tech here with uh, the gas saved up. Oh, it looks like uh, Jaded Shard says um, from SC Swarm. He said, we have three or four non Zerg players on the team. So Count them three or four. <laughs> <laughs> Tre treasure those players, man. It's uh, hard to come by. Especially since your whole team is uh, mainly Zerg, I think, so. Got to cherish those uh, minorities. <laughs> <laughs> now, just to um, point out something with the Marine first, I actually like this a lot. Now, I know he's going mech, so that, that plays maybe more into that style. But uh, getting a Marine out is something which is really cool because you can often uh, get that scouting overlord with the Zerg if the Zerg isn't careful. And that can be a good pickup for you. Because often yeah. Reaper doesn't do a ton anyways, so it's it's an interesting style. I remember seeing Light do this a lot when he played the CTL. Oh. But I don't know, I, I still prefer Reaper because there are two pathways, you know, on this map. There's a, you can go to the natural event and you can also jump into the main as well. So I would have preferred to see him go uh, Reaper. But I guess yeah, Marine's not too bad because Again, this map doesn't really have a cliff for Overlords to hide on. So you can sometimes maybe snipe a Overlord with the Marine. But it looks like uh, Razius is going to go for a 4 Hellion opening. And actually, we're going to have a second factory. So we might actually see some some mech here. This is an interesting style. Um, yeah, is he going to be going really Hellion heavy here, or going to see a Cyclone round being produced? Uh, we'll take more Hellions. Maybe we'll see some Cyclones with the second fac. Yep, looks like Cyclones. He canceled the Hellions. It's just oh, going to be like a four Hellion, two Cyclone push, which is very interesting. It could do a lot. Yeah, I mean, I actually like this because this map, I think, is actually really pretty good for mech. So... Yeah, we might actually see him just go on full-on mech here. Uh, but Ariach, he has not uh, scattered this, so this could actually be uh, pretty scary for him if he doesn't actually anticipate this pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, Ariach did not move his first Overlord into the base at all, which is a little bit risky. Now he's going to be sending some links up, and looks like he'll see this force just as it moves out. So he will get a decent amount of time to respond. Um, looks like we've got a ton of links being produced and should see some static T going, D going down. And actually looks like Razius is waffling. Maybe he'll wait for more Cyclones. Interesting. 
Mm, oh, I think he actually forgot the armory. That's oh. why he uh, he didn't move out as quickly because you wanna you know time it out so that by the time you reach your uh, Zerk's base, that the army is done, then you can change those uh, hellings into hellbats. Right. So that's gonna be a little bit late there. Now, will but... Ariok be able to defend this? Only thing he has is wings, and the static D is late. I don't know. If he's banking a ton. He should have thrown down like three spines. He's on thin ice right here. He has a couple queens, um, but the lings will get burned out very quickly by that many hellions. Like to see him throw down just a, a couple more spines. Um, now the attack from Razius is coming in. The cyclones are here, and the hellbats uh, have transformed as well. Oh, wow. Those hellbats just roasted. Oh my god, barbecue lings for days. Yeah, that was insane. Um, those lings just melted. Um, I think really great. I think it was whole positioning on the Hellbats, or maybe just got a good angle. And I think, yeah, two two more spines would have made that a, quite a bit easier to hold. But he chose to just queue up a ton of lings, which that can go south if you don't have banes or roaches or anything like that. Um, he might clean some of this up with wings. It's possible. Mm. Oh no! I don't know. All these Zerk, all the Zerk players in the chat probably closing their eyes right now. Yeah. And the drones Rest are all in peace. Be... All these drones. Uh... Yeah, this is pretty much game-ending da damage here. Yeah, so I think from Ariok here, what we can learn from this is, you know, maybe be a little bit earlier with the scout. Um, send the Ling up a bit quicker, maybe 30 seconds faster, if you're not going to just go in with the Overlord. And then once you see that, um, maybe respect the Hellbat Cyclone push a bit more with some more Static D or maybe a Bane Nest, possibly. Um, and just realize that just uh, pure Ling can melt so fast. All right, looks like Ariash is going to finally be able to clean this out, but boy, that was a lot of, I guess, uh, damage done. 108 units killed by our green Terran compared to the 19 of the Zerg. You know what's weird is that he only lost six drones there. Oh, yeah, but, but I mean, look yeah. at the worker. Yeah, it's like 44 to 29, so you never want to be in that position as Zerg. Especially because uh, Terran got mules, so that's that 44 it turns into like maybe 50 or 55 or something. Like that. Yeah, I mean, the more importantly, I think, is that um, you know, all that time he spent queuing up lings was not into drones. So that's why, even though he didn't lose too many drones, he will lose this game, which does not have enough. Raise us nice strategy on this map. Um, you know, works really well on this map, and just props to him. Well executed build. All right, make the I guess the scoreboard right now is going to be one two one. Okay, now set number number trace will be. Need another plot set, right? Yep. This is going to be our second plot set. Hmm. Okay, no, wait. That was a walk. Wait. Am I right? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah actually, the, yeah, the second plot was a walkover yes. loss. Unfortunately, yep. we had a miscommunication with one of our players, good target, and somebody else. Uh, she thought that... At first, we thought we had a walkover because... She claimed it, but she got confused on the time zones, um, the time zone conversion. So unfortunately, we did lose that set for free, which is very unfortunate. Didn't want that to happen, but um, hopefully going forward, we will be a bit more um, which following up. I will follow up on players making sure they get their time zone conversions right 
and so hopefully that will not happen again. Mm -hmm. So uh, ST, uh, SS1 will go up two to one. And we're going to go into our first uh, diamond set here. Yeah, so set number four is Baxter versus Jaded Shard. Funny name. <laughs> Wait, Jade is a color, correct? Uh, or a plant? Uh, yeah, plant? some uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, something. But you, yeah, Jade Shard is in the Twitch chat, so uh, it's uh, we're about to catch your game. So hopefully, we sh we should have a good one here. All right. Down in the bottom corner here, representing Psionic Aftermath, tied 1 1. It's the Romanian Zerg Baxter. Oh, I actually did not know he was Romanian. That's yeah, nice to know. That's pretty cool. All right, here at the top left, we have our blue Zerg here, representing CS Swarm. He is Jaded Shard. And it looks like no surprise here. Both players gonna go ahead and go for that nat natural at the gold. Mm -hmm. And this is uh yeah, this is one of the I guess maps that generally people don't like uh, just because of the layout of it, which is understandable. The gold, I mean, it's just I guess a little unique or weird. To have the two naturals and then the open exposed uh, at the back. So, you know, if uh, one of the players go for, for, for some fast roach, then they can park some roaches behind those mineral lines and they have to go then prevent mining from, uh, for your opponent. Yeah, it is definitely a whack map. Um, it's, it's weird. Um, and I think... Um, did Blizzard intend the minerals to be able to be glitched through with units? Yeah, so I think Swagger was the one that kind of informed me about this, but you can actually, with a probe, uh, I mean, both players are not Protoss, but with, if you're a Protoss, you can actually do a mineral line trick with the probe to actually bypass the gold base, I mean, the gold patches, and then go into your opponent's base and do a secret cannon rush or something. It's awesome. Okay, so it looks like Baxter is going for a much faster speed and a Baneling Nest as well. Yeah, actually, um, because you get the faster gold, you get a lot of you know, resources pretty quickly. So going for Ling, Baneling on this map is actually pretty common, I think. Yeah, now Jade built a few more drones. So Baxter's attack is going to become a lot quicker, it looks like. Yeah, and because, you know, he's a Zerg, it's uh, harder to actually wall off. He does have one queen at the wall, but he needs a second queen to fully block that. And it looks like that slow queen is finally going to make his way over. It's like a workout exercise for that queen there. <laughs> Carry me, man. <laughs> okay nice so he does get the wall off but again he does not scout the zergling oh he actually morphed the banelings at home i'm not sure i like that i uh it's better to actually m go across the map and then morph the banelings so that you know it takes is a quicker reinforcement but he's gonna actually go ahead and make the banelings at home which will delay the push a bit yeah, and another thing is that it could get scouted much easier too um, in the cross path, which I think it, they will get scouted here um, by the Overlord from Jaded Shard. And although it's only two queens here, so these Banes um, could put in some work. Uh, the Spine Crawlers might finish in time, we'll see. Um, if the Queens use their Transfuses, um, and it looks like the Spines might barely finish in time, although the Banes are going to detonate. And they're going to detonate on those two queens. Two queens are going to fall. Um, and it looks like they're going to get onto the spine crawlers right before they morph. One is up. 
but one Bane slips through. This is going poorly for Jaded Shard. It's like one spine's going to go down. Um, although the Roaches will clean this up, Misty. Ooh, I think maybe, yeah, he just barely just bought enough time for the Roaches to be made, so he will be able to survive this. And yeah, this is going to be pretty scary because he's going to have to get some damage done because he's twice below, I mean, Jaded Shard is tw twice ahead in terms of his work account. Oh, getting some Roaches out in the middle, though, that's pretty nice. Yeah, that was a pretty huge gamble from Baxter. I mean, his drone count is so low. But again, with those Banelands morphing at home, I think that kind of gave Adrada Shard some extra time. If he had uh, made the Banelands um, across the map uh, at the first place, I think he would have attacked earlier, much earlier, and would have actually gotten damage before the Roaches came out. But looks like the Roaches for Jade Shard is coming across the map. And what does Baxter have? He's uh look at the production tab, 12 links on the way. Okay, now it looks oh, like gonna go ahead. He's gonna get this around here. Oh, but it's not enough. Yeah, um, good idea, but couldn't quite finish it on those roaches. Now looks like the Mineral line for Baxter is going to be sieged and it's going to start losing drones. Um, Ling's trickling in, not going to be enough. And it's hard to see this going well for Baxter. He gambled here, but could not quite make it work. Uh, yeah. Definitely was a risk. But uh, gotta give it to Jada Shard for defending pretty well against the, uh, I guess, semi all in or all in. Yeah, that was, wasn't quite all all in, but it was a huge commitment here. Now, he's morphing actually two, two uh, Ravagers, so that'll be nice. He can start getting some zone, um, some, start pushing up here. Now, Baxter's Lings, now this Ling counterattack is all he has to hope for. Um, he might get a Ravager or two, that would be nice um, with the Lings. Yeah, looks like he's going to clean up both the Ravages. That's a pretty, that's a nice pickup, um, but not really that much at the end of the day. And I think we will see Baxter tap out pretty soon. Yeah, those Roaches are beefy, and yeah, he has no answer to that. And Jada Shard already transitioning into Hydra list, so he's already trans transitioning to the next stage. But yeah, Baxter, I don't think he can actually clean up this army. Yeah, rough for Baxter. Um, it didn't seem like he was totally on top of the execution of that build. Um, the all-in, or semi-all-in, I guess. I mean, cutting that many drones is pretty all-in-ish, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, so, so it looks like it's going to be 3-1 uh, in terms of the score in favor of SC Swarm. Right, and our next map is going to be our second D uh, Diamond or Diamond Two and Under slot, and we're going to have our good old everybody's favorite neighborhood Cannon Rusher Xenodactyl. <laughs> I like that versus the Zerg for SC Swarm Dreamer. <laughs> Zeno's like, can we skip the Dirty Minute games? <laughs> <laughs> All right, in the top corner here for SC Swarm, who is up 3 1, threatening to close in on the kill. It's the Orange Zerg Dreamer. And spawning at the bottom right, we have our friendly neighborhood cannon rusher. It is Zeno Dacko. Ooh, both guys showing some love here. Nice and manner. It's nice. And there is the forge. The 
probe. Cue those uh, scary shark music or something. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And Xenodactyl avoided the path of the Overlord, so he will be able to slip in with the probe. And starts a cannon on the outside. That's interesting. Yeah, so basically, um, Zeno likes to position his uh, cannon rush outside of the natural. Uh, he will make a cannon and uh, a gateway and then, you know, slowly work his cannon up. Hmm. Now, this is pretty close to in view of the um, path. And there's actually six lings that came out pretty fast. Yeah, unfortunately for Zeno, I think his opponent actually scouted him, knows that he's a frequent cannon rusher, and maybe that's why he went for the earlier pool. And this will allow the Lynx to actually maybe shut down this cannon. Oh, but this uh, positioning is just way too good. So the cannon will finish in time. But he needs to throw down more cannons. I don't think he's going to lose his probe. Oh, no. Oh, he does have another probe at the, uh, I guess, the uh, 12 o'clock position. He definitely needs to start making some... Uh, more cans, but I think he's trying to actually wall off, wall off at home to make sure he doesn't die to the link counter attack. But uh, his probe needs to start because uh, once that second hatchery is done and the creep spread, he can't make the cannons. And yeah, cannon going to finish up at home should be enough to push us back. Um, wings wailing away on the cyber core. But you're right, uh, this probe from the 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is super late in getting these cannons up. Maybe too late. We'll see. Yeah, definitely too late because that cannon is not going to be able to reach the hatchery before the creep uh, starts spreading. Bummer. I think uh, the probe definitely had enough time to get there. Just couldn't quite make it happen. Um, now he has oh. a build up here. He's going to lose that cannon unnecessarily to Zealot. He's right there. And he might have time if he gets the probe over there to get a couple cannons in the back. He needs to move, though. That creep is spreading. Oh, does not want to lose, lose the Zealot. And he will lose the Zealot for free. Ouch. That's unfortunate. Ooh. Oh, a little bit of a... I mean, uh... Hesitation there by Dreamer, so we'll lose some links for free, but I still think he should be in a pretty good position. He has his uh, spine crawler already up, so you can position that up, and also his Roach Warren, so he can start ma morphing those uh, Ravagers and snipe away at the cannons. Uh, in the meantime, Zeno is transitioning into Rope Bow here, which is the. Oh, uh, yeah. Robo pretty good. Um, I honestly wonder if something like Stargate would be pretty cool here. Yeah, Stargate is another, I guess, option here. Um, but Robo is, I think, more more the common one, uh, at least against Zerg. Um, Zeno got the forward creep tumor here. That was a nice pick off. Gonna get another one. Ooh, That's nice. That's nice. snipe there. Um, but does need to start making that uh, mortal as soon as possible, which he does. Stalker, microing nicely um, with the shield batteries. Oh, he's going to target fire on the pylon. It was not a Nartosis pylon, fortunately, for Zeno. And he might be able to get a couple more cannons down. I'd like to see him, um, before the creep spreads, to get a couple more forward cannons here. Um, the Stalker's microing very nicely here. And there's going to be an Immortal out as well. I think he might be able to make something done here if he micros very well. It's going to be close. Ooh, nice. Nice type on the Roach. If you can, if you can twindle down... Dwindle down those uh, roach numbers, and that'll be good news for him as he still has uh, the cannons and shoe batteries to be enforced to. Gets another roach, nicely done. So far, no health on the Protoss units have been lost. Um, and the second immortal is here, gonna start focus firing the hatchery. This might go down. Um, I think you just target that while he still has a chance. 
Um, he's not tar targeting it. Um, there are some lings up. He can't get surrounded here. He needs to get back to the shield batteries, and he will. Oh, nice micro by Zeno, and all of a sudden, I think he's going to get this hatch. Yeah, this is insane micro from Zeno. Nicely done. I don't think he's lost a unit yet, besides the Zealot. Am I right? Yeah. If we look at the units lost, uh, two Zealots only down, and 32 Lings and 7 Roaches, and one Ravager going down. So ready, getting some really good trades here. Yeah, I'm um, going to start picking off some drones here. The spine. Ooh, gotta be careful here. Don't lose a stalker. Um, keeps getting the creep tumors, which is nice. And the answer for from Dreamer here is he's going to be getting a lair, so we'll see what he gets. He's really backed against the wall here. Um, there's not much he can do on one base. Maybe he goes Spire or something weird like that, but he's using 10 drones as well. Okay, these lings from um, Dreamer might be wrapping around. Oh, oh nice getting that li into that little hook area. So the Zer I mean the Zergling can't get this around, and man, Zeno has got himself in a pretty good position after not so well, I guess executed cannon rush in the beginning, but the way he transitioned so far, uh, looking pretty nice. As he's already getting his, he got his Robo Bay, so he can start making some uh, disruptors and he's already got the ninja expand so <laughs> yeah i mean on paper it looks like xeno's won this game yeah but oh we have a nidus net i mean nice worm so let's see if he can get some damage across the map he has the overlord at the uh, near the main base of xenodactyl so xeno can I guess uh, I can't really scout this. So this could be scary for Dreamer. Now, but at the same time, if Dreamer goes ahead and attacks across the map, that, that allows Xeno to get um, to go ahead and attack his base, so. Okay, now the War Prism coming in here with the two Immortals. This is dangerous. Looks like he's gonna snipe a queen. Nice pick off. Um, oh, he's gonna mine. Okay. Oh. oh! Oh, that's so rough. That is so rough. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> that is why this game is going to... Yeah, this, people said 30-minute game. And I'm like, how? <laughs> that's, a, that's a rough loss there. Yeah. All right. Looks like Nidus has been thrown down. And here we go. Let's see how Zeno... Um, counter this. He is going to go ahead and sack his main base, which is the best thing he can do. But I think he should attack right now, like right now, while all the units are across the map. This this is his chance to go ahead and get some damage done on his own. Okay, I, I do not like this, this disruptor. Um, oh man, losing that disruptor. I think disruptors are just all around um, not very good anymore. Um, and I mean, maybe you could get a good hit on the drone, but I think Immortals are a bit more multi-purpose here. We'll see. But it looks like all this huge Ling force here. Actually, yeah, Disruptors would be good against the Lings. Never mind. Don't, don't listen to me. Um, the Ling's going to be coming back around and could hit Zeno. This is going to be kind of a base race scenario, it looks like. Oh, wow. He's getting... <laughs> Dream is going to go ahead and take Zeno's old base, but oh my god, look, look at that. The old base only has four mineral patches. Uh, that would have been better for him to expand to the natural, I think, where it has like the full mineral patches. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he can attack Zeno's second base. I mean, I guess ninja base. It has actually no defense here. Yeah, Zeno's ninja is wide open. And I don't even think he has warp gate at this point, so he can't really get anything done. And gonna have to pull his troops back he might lose quite a bit he's fighting with probes here he needs to pull the probe and it looks like there's gonna be a wraparound with lings this is so bad oh man that might have been the game changer right there i think xeno was ahead 
for the most part but with that losing all that those probes 21 probes uh going down so far in this game i think that might have been the turnaround in this game because right now xeno only has four pro uh, four probes compared to 13. and so i mean the only advantage he has now i think is his unit composition i think his unit composition is stronger so if he can attack now and maybe hopefully win the game but i think this uh as the game goes on dreamer will be going getting further and further ahead yeah, Zeno's got a ton of uh, minerals banked, and what I w would have liked to see him do in that situation is just pull all his probes up to the high ground with the shield batteries and the cannons. I think he would have been able to save a lot of the probes. Um, it's possible the Nexus would have fallen, but meanwhile, it looks like a Immortal is going to fall. And all he has is Disruptors, which are very temperamental. Oh, and we'll actually lose one of them, too. Yeah, disruptors are and very difficult to use. Yeah. If you can transfer all those, like, cannons and shield batteries all to this natural, then I think he should be safe. But, you know, as we all know, cannons and shield batteries can't walk. <laughs> they can't lift. Exactly. Yeah, I think Xeno... Maybe I'm not seeing something, but I think he was in a pretty good spot after he recalled the probes. That was really smart. But yeah, but yeah, those lings. <laughs> I I think if he would have pulled all his probes and then maybe put a nexus at the natural, kind of working with what he has already, might have been a better call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe I don't know. Maybe some some cans as his natural or something exactly would yeah. have been also would, or would have also help because uh if he saved those probes uh he definitely would have been ahead yeah for sure and crucially as well he lost those disruptors and i don't think they did a ton but dreamer is has to start from scratch here uh that can't be understated he's got to remake everything and he's really not mining a ton. Yeah, that's true. He's actually, yeah, he has he hasn't made any drones so far, and he's also uh, sacrificed some drones to make those roach that roach horn and the hatch. So he's down to nine to nine workers. So actually, all of a sudden, maybe it's not too bad because you know he still has a chance here. Yeah, it's true. Um. I would like to see him maybe stop making disruptors and start getting some gateway units. Um, although maybe uh, he... go for drops with disruptors. Does he even have a uh, warp gate tech? I don't think so. Yeah, he doesn't even have warp gate tech, so he's oh, he just making. Yeah, he didn't start it yet. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so his main production is from the robo there. Now I think disruptors are good if. If the unit composition of your Zerg opponent is mainly roaches, but it looks like Dreamer has uh, some links in his uh, composition as well, so that makes it harder to use the disruptor because those disruptor will, you know, I guess activate on those links instead of the roaches. Um, so better for Xeno, so maybe go for some maybe Colossus or more some more Immortals as well. Yeah, it's true now. Uh, Zeno is finally cleaning up this main base here. Um, gets the spawning pool that will have to be made. Um, I'm just cleaning up these larvae here. Or maybe not. He's going to leave these larvae here. And I wonder, those could come back to bite Zeno. You know, get some um, surprise lings or something to backstab. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I do like this, uh, um, I mean, disrupt the drop uh, thing that he's trying to attempt here. Oh, nice. Get the Nidus there. That was a nice pickup for him uh, and gets out with the disruptors as well. So if he can use the disruptors just to make small trades that are effective, um, that could be good for him. Yeah, if he, yeah, disruptors, you know, you can just use them over to just dwindle down the army then. Then all of a sudden, I think Xeno could be able to win this game now the thing about war prism and disruptor is that 
they nerfed it so that disruptor there's a delay when you drop it so you can't actually shoot out the disruptor uh once you drop it you need to wait like uh a few before you can actually activate the uh the disruptor yeah i'm, I'm personally well, i was kind of mad about that like i feel like the disruptor was finally people were starting to be able to use it um and then they nerfed it and now it's kind of irrelevant so yeah i think uh they nerfed it because uh i mean i can understand why because uh you know disruptor drops against terran was were really common at the time and it, w it didn't allow them to actually um have a response time because uh the disruptor will be just you know will just be dropped and then they can automatically shoot so i can see why blizzard did that uh, but yeah i guess because of that disruptor drops has been less uh i guess out of the meta um you know so far so both these players are not forcing the issue at all they are content just to sit back and enjoy the ride um you know macroing up this has turned into a macro game yeah i mean if if you if you just tuned in right now you would have thought that both players spawn um uh, i guess the opposite direction <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like all of a sudden you see the the zerg entire base at the other side um but then but if you you know haven't been if you just tuned in right now you would have thought oh this is they just uh the protoss just lost his main base exactly you know? now there's a colossus here and disruptors uh disruptors file fired a little bit haphazardly and i don't think this is enough here oh maybe with the colossus i'll be able to get something done okay decent Ooh. trade for xeno yeah decent trade uh, although he does maybe want to back off and maybe get to, I think the magic number is three Colossus. I think that at that point you get some uh, good splash damage. Um, but definitely want to be careful because right now I think Zeno, yeah, Zeno has 39 army supply to 60. So if, if he loses this, then it's going to be really difficult to come back. Yeah, he has got to be really careful. He's going to be pushing into an army of Ravagers. Now, Creep Spread sees all of this. This is a really piddly force, to be honest. Um, and this force is just going to get on top of it. It's just going to stomp it, looks like. Oh! You could warp it. Ah, oh, you could have saved the Colossus in the Warp Prism, but... That's a huge loss. He could have saved that. Yeah. I think that was unnecessarily aggressive from Zeno. I didn't mind him poking in, but he definitely needed to uh, engage more carefully. Uh, especially going on the creep. You know, you, you know, the Zerg army does get more speed, so they can get this around like much quicker and. So uh, probably would have been better to get maybe a his observer and then just like kill the creep before engaging actually. So um, looks like he's actually transitioning back into this. Oh no, Colossus again. Oh yeah, he's getting Dermal Lance. So Colossus is his tech of choice here. You know, Zeno needs to worry about um, getting his natural and third up as well because the Zerg is, is on three bases um, or actually just two because one mined out but the zerg has good creep spread and most likely can start expanding soon so xeno has got to worry because that uh, ninja base that he took originally when he was cannoning is going to run out relatively soon well, there's, there's a little bit left um but the workers are declining rapidly on that yeah uh, but but at the same time xeno hasn't been really uh, I guess consistent on his pro production, so I guess the macro is still in favor of Dreamer. But this army here, this is now this is a pretty scary army. Uh, again, would have preferred maybe three Colossus before attacking, but who knows? You know, if he gets a, a good disruptor shot, maybe he can. Yeah, I would like to see Zeno stop trying to push in this south side. I'd like to see him try to take the fight um, in the route going into the third. 
so that if he pokes in and can start getting some damage done, he can start maybe killing some drones or uh, get some pot shots off on the, ha on the hatchery. Because when he's poking in here, he's not really taking any ground. And the third base goes unscathed from Dreamer. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta say, uh, Dreamer's got some impressive priest break going on to the side here. Uh, definitely want to actually start the middle, start, you know, going ahead in the middle part in terms of creep spread, but in terms of the side creep spread, it's been really nice. Yeah, exactly. The kind of the, on the mini map, looks like two purple arms getting ready to hug Xeno. Um, maybe fatally, we'll see. And he's pushing in here on the side of the third, so that is nice. Uh, but I'm still worried. Uh, Dreamer's up about 30 army supply here. And if he gets some really good biles, this could be so scary. You just gotta be careful. Okay, decent disruptor shot. That's what he needs to start with. And the Colossus with range is fighting okay. He just really cannot lose this uh, expensive Robotech here. Oh, he oh. The prism with the Colossus. No. That was so unfortunate there. And now lurkers are into the fray. Oh man. Uh, and the chat looks like Ed Denial is saying, or Ed Denial is asking how the week with Jammin is going. We are tied 3-3. It's a nail biter right now. We went up 3-0 uh, and then we lost three straight. And <laughs> it's up to uh, the match tomorrow to decide. So, Zeno uh, saying he doesn't want any Zerg hugs. <laughs> and Lurkers coming in from Dreamer. Lurkers are so good in PvT. Yeah, they're definitely, I guess, uh, really common in the meta now because just because of their incredible splash that Oh, but he's going up in a little choke area, but I think he just have way too much. He's going to go ahead and push back the Protoss army here. And there is just no answer for the Lurkers here. I don't think he even has an observer. Oh, okay, he just made the observer just joining into the army. But against the army composition, I think he doesn't have like, you want like the charge lot, immortal, archon, storm kind of opposition to deal with against the lurkers. But he just right now has Colossus and some blink stalkers. He's gonna try to get some damage done with the blink stalkers, but definitely needs to be careful. Okay, nice night. Get one, get one lurker, so that's good. Yeah, exact, exactly. And um, I mean, imagine if this force from Xeno, this was like four or five Colossus right now. Um, because if he wouldn't have lost those Colossus before, then he would be in a much better spot, I think. Just because, I mean, Colossus is really a scale. Once you get above three, you know, get to four or five Colossus number, you can really start shredding the Zerg ball. But as it happened, he lost too many Colossus, I think. I don't think he's going to get the critical mass of Robotech that he needs to fight this force. And also, uh, Zeno has not, again, kept up with his uh, pro production consistently, which has uh, allowed, made him, I guess, kind of behind throughout this whole game. I think, uh, yeah, he's like 50 workers right now. Probably want to be at the, uh, you know, 65 or 70 mark by now, at least. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it looks like he's transitioning into Stargate, getting that Oracle, which is, I think, the preferred method here. You uh, can get the Oracle Revelation on the Lurkers, and that helps a lot in the fight. Yeah, that's uh, the Observers can get sniped so easily, so that really makes it nice. I don't want to keep harping on this, but I really think that if... <gasps> oh, he lost, loses the Oracle. That's, oh, man, that's such a big loss for Zeno. At least he got the Revelation off one. But I was saying, yeah. if if Xeno went for like double Robo here and went for steady Colossus and Immortal production, I think he would be better uh, in better shape. Um, diving in, getting a few units here. A nice pickup for Xeno. Not too big though. Um, it looks like Dreamer will reposition his workers. All right. So looks like. Yeah, Streamer is getting his fifth base. Um, not probably would be nice to get for Xenos to get his 
forth right now as he's banking a lot of minerals. Um, the good thing is that he does have a lot of resources despite, you know, on uh, being on 50 workers. And uh, but then he's a little bit supply block right now. He's gonna go ahead and try to engage. Oh, that that wasn't the best disruptor shot. I don't know why he pulled back. He was in a great angle there. Um, and and now he's retreating and gonna lose some precious robo units. I think he would have held his ground. Would have been a little bit better for him. Mm, I think with the lurker uh, burrow, I think he had to. Um, that's what probably why he had to retreat. I think. Um, but again, this unit composition is. A little tough to go against this uh, kind of army. Oh, does not want to lose the Oracle. Uh, okay, so close okay, there. Nice. Missed two lurkers though. Ouch. Ate a bunch of spines on those squishy, squishy stalkers. Ah, uh, man. Xenodex is on the timetable right now because Raider Spire is on the way for Dreamer. He's going to go to that Brutalor tech, and if he does, then it's going to be really hard to. Oh my god, he's got the army out of position. Oh no. Oracle dies again. Oh no. The army from Xeno is so split up. Um Gloss is in a great spot though. Um luckily for Xeno. But the And he might clean this up, but I think the lurkers in the end are gonna be so hard to deal with he's typing up, he's losing so many of these lurker spines. So painful. Oh man. The dreamer just botched that? I think he just allowed him to get back into the game here. He will be able to clean up all oh the lurkers. No. Oh, but oh no. I, I mean, that, that was a little bit of a botch, but Dreamer's on four bases at this point. And the Xeno's been losing so much to these lurker spines that the Robotech, which is the, the deciding factor here, has been going down. He's losing Colossus and Immortals. I think these Hydras pushing in will seal the deal. And unfortunately, yep. um, what at first looked like a really good um, cannon rush, or really good cannon rush follow-up, I guess, turned into a macro game which Zeno wasn't quite able to win here. And uh, well played by Dreamer. Yeah, I mean, Zeno did have his chances to win, so not a bad game by him. Definitely had his chances. Uh, uh, Dreamer with the better macro here at the end will take the next game and probably well yeah we'll seal the deal in terms of the score for this week as uh, you know you need four wins out of seven to actually win the week so it will officially have won the week so far four to one now still interested to see how the other games went in terms of the uh, other diamond set and the master set so we should got we should get into that pretty soon as uh yeah it looks like dreamer enjoying a 170 to 102 supply and i'm expecting him to uh move in pretty soon yeah he's just biding his time here um the for most most of these games um if the zerg has enough expansions of course the zerg can wait all day um, unless the Protoss attacks. And looks like Xeno is transitioning into Storm really late. Or maybe just... Okay, looks like those are just Archons. But I don't think they'll even get a chance to morph. we got a multi-prong attack coming in from Dreamer. Ling streaming into the third. And Hydra is streaming up into the fourth here. They move commanded for a while. But I don't even think it'll matter. Um, as this game... I think will be decided here with the Lings streaming in and the third falling to more Lings, I think. Yeah, this should be it. Well fought from both sides. Yeah, like you said, it was a, I think, definitely both uh, sides had some chances to win. I think, um, you know, had some very good chances to win. Um, but a tough game. And um, thanks to both players for playing. I think both players who played this game are watching. So, um, thanks for participating in the CTL. <laughs> Nemesis is like, I, I went AFK for a few minutes and the game is still going on. <laughs> I know. You don't get too many 30 minute games in CTL replay casts. Yeah. And I think, uh, props to Dreamer. I, I, I'm assuming he scouted Xeno 
pretty well, which is probably why he prompted the fast pull to defend against the cannon rush. Um, so, yeah, props to him for, uh, you know, preparing and scouting his opponent. And GG. So congratulations to SC Swarm. You guys won the week. Um, I think it would have been, honestly, it would have been 4-3 if good target would have played. But that's that's impossible to know. So officially the score, oh, I need to stop myself from spoiling. <laughs> so we're going to finish the last games, even though we know SC Swarm won, and we'll see what happened with those. Yeah, and we're getting into the, uh, I guess, higher tier level of games. So should be should be good. Yeah, so our D1 uh, match was yet another ZBZ. And we have Snap XD versus 2. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was our downfall. We tried to put out a lot of Zerg players against a team specialized in Zerg <laughs> <I know. laughs> players. Yeah, I think yeah, a couple, a couple bunch of things went wrong this week. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Snap. Um, he's no longer playing in the D1 slot, but he's been great um, in the past seasons and um, nice guy. And this was his second to last week uh, that he was going to be eligible forever in the D1 slot. So good to see him play and uh, props to him for him for playing for us. And um, as he goes up into the Masters Spirit in the Sky, the Masters 3s, um, he will be missed and we thank him for his service as we get into this game. Yeah. All right. Here at the uh, bottom right, we have our purple Zerg player representing Psy X. It is Snap XD. And in the top, representing SC Swarm, it's the um, pink Zerg to sew. So, he so something. Now, I just realized uh, I think Snap XD and Xenodecto has a bromance going on because uh, maybe that XD on the last name of his of snap is representing xenodactyl that is a kind of theory so if you ship you know the ship <laughs> name of will be snap xd and xenodactyl ship name will just be snap xd <laughs> it makes sense that's so funny <laughs> oh snap um so for builds so what we can talk about in the cvz is Pretty much mirror builds for both players. And the map is Dreamweaver. So, uh, the third, that we've talked about this a bunch, the thirds are super hard to defend. So that um, c uh, makes an impact on the play of the Zerg players and what they choose to go for. Alright, SC Swarm says it is pronounced... T S O or so. Uh, I guess the T is maybe silent. Uh, so I guess T S O. T S O or so. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, you should try naming yourselves something that's pronounceable <laughs> for casters. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I just. Just call him the General Tao Chicken or something. I don't know. Oh, right. I like it when okay. people get really upset at me for pronouncing. Well, not too many people do, but some people have been like really frustrated. And I'm like, I'm trying, but I don't <laughs> want to spend like five minutes in the middle of a game trying to puzzle out how your name is pronounced on the game. But it's all good. So, yeah, Bane Nest is going down for both players, and we're going into that Ling Bane. And oh, we see a fast third oh, from both players. Been trying now, to stop uh, the diff oh sorry, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Yeah. Pretty much um mirror builds from both players and the Bane's morphing from Snap, they're gonna be able to defend this third base, so nothing will happen, I think. 
Now, speed just finished for so so. I think. Actually, he might be able to pressure this third. Um, Bane's just finally getting some connections. Ooh, well, he escaped that Bane link. Oh, he barely got it. Trading two, oh no, four Zerglings for two Banelings, I think. General Tao Chicken will, <laughs> will uh, accept that. <laughs> okay, now this is getting weird. Snap is diving on some of these Banes. Gets a couple cancels. Nice pickup from him. And these Banes morphed in that little gap in the rock there. And looks like Snap is going to trade some Banes. It's a nice trade. And looks like in the middle of Dreamweaver, he gets some really nice trades. Yeah, I actually practiced um, against Snap XD in ZBZ before, and his Ling Bane Ling control is really nice. And it's showing right like right now. Yeah, and he's up a little bit in army. Um, see how the Bane trade is. He just trades two for two, and now two for one, so nice trading. Um, oh, no, no Banelings yet for So here. So this might be a Snap XD's chance. Oh, oh! He tried diving on some Banes there. That one did not pan out at all. And now it looks like Snap's not taking too many good trades. The um, reinforcements from Snap, though, will be able to defend this um, on Dream catcher I think I was saying Weaver um, has that little narrow wedge there that he snap can control so I find it interesting both players you know win for the faster thirds but they're able to control it here um, I think at the end of the day it looks like the engagement was was a wash but importantly to so 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 has is up in workers about 10 drones, that's a pretty big deal. Snap hat made some more lings, but he might be caught um, under drones here. Alright, so yeah, like you said, he is a little bit behind, uh, Snap is a little bit behind in drones. He is a little bit ahead in army though, um, but it looks like So does have the much earlier Roach Warren. I don't think uh, Snap actually has a Roach Warren himself. He's still relying on Ling Bane Ling tech, so he's definitely gonna have to get some damage done. I think he will be able to get this dirt though. Mm, nice Bane trade. Oh, nice trade. Yeah. yeah. Oh, doesn't get the queen though. That's unfortunate. Oh, he's going in. Back. Oh no. He's, yeah, he's going back in. There's no Banelings here. He's gonna get this around. Oh, oh he's no, he's gonna go ahead and target. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I think Ling's. He... Ling's in the main, getting some drones here. Um, although, nice drilling from So. Oh, but the third is undefended. And, oh, snap. Missed the opportunity there. He could have pounced on the third. Okay, this is pretty, yeah, a pretty scary moment for Snap XD. Because, uh, yeah, there's a lot of roaches for So out now. If he moves out and go attacks like right now, I don't think Snap actually can defend against this because he only has the majority of his army is Lings. He's starting to make some roaches though. So hopefully he can get back in terms of the roach count. Um, but Snap going to go ahead and try to counterattack, which is the best thing he can do because his advantage right now is mobility with the Lings. So if he can, uh, whenever he sees. So moving out with his army, he can just like go in with the links. Oh, will he nice get this third though? Nice reaction time to so though. Yeah, he has some good overlord pl placement, so he can actually see the uh, army movement. So well done in terms of that. And uh, yeah, it looks like both players are going to go ahead and transition into the full Roach versus Roach uh, game here. <laughs> Looks like he's saying he'll never get it now. The third. Oh, <laughs> wrong chat. Now that's embarrassing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so funny because he was talking about what Snap was doing and then he sends it to Snap. That's hilarious. 
Oh, man. <laughs> it looks like Snap is diving in with some lings on the main. This is really nice. He's like, you know what? You got a bigger army? Well, so what? I'm going to come in on your main and wreck your growing line and force you to pull back. Oh, man. that Yeah, that forces his entire army to go back. Getting some drones as well. Nice pick off. Um, Snap's killed 10 drones, a respectable number, but that number's just going to keep climbing here as the lings are still in the main hold positioning on the drones. And now the worker count is a lot closer. It's about 7 off. And I oh, think sn Snap has enough roaches here. Yeah, yeah, he will have enough roaches here. Um, let's see the unit count. I think, yeah, 32 to 33 roaches. So has allowed him to catch back up in terms of the roach count. Uh, but does need to get back into the harvester count because right now, uh, So is enjoying a six worker lead. Yeah, the army lead though is going to snap. Although it yeah, looks, it looks like he's. It looks like a uh, So is going for ravagers. Yeah. Now also, um, So is has a does have a plus one upgrade advantage so even though he's behind in the worker i mean in army supply he does have that advantage um now it's going to come to this concave here this engagement nice spread by snap here yeah this is a brutal concave snap is pouncing here um the bile is not really landing anywhere and he's charging forward he has roach speed and oh, oh no it's like the extra fat of the um corruptors bulged in that little seam there and snap was able to pounce on a few of them there yeah yeah i think uh his decision not to go to Dren jenny craig to uh make those fat, uh, roaches you know skinnier has uh cost him a lot of roaches <laughs> in doing that and will he get the dirt he will get the dirt so i guess ch chatting to his friend you can tell him now that he did get the dirt and now So is trying to charge forward on the Roaches, but it looks like Snap still has a concave. Um, it's going to be just fine, although he doesn't want to lose all this here. Oh, yeah, the reinforcement of So now. Oh, actually, maybe Snap has enough. Oh, uh, the concave is just... Yeah, the concave is just so good for Snap here. Yeah, Snap had in every engagement just a few more Roaches. And I think this attack may eventually be cleaned up, but the important thing is that he got the third, and he's trading really well. Yeah, I think Snap should just, yeah, just retreat maybe, and then, oh, actually, he's just going to go ahead and just, just uh, sack his whole entire army. And right now, all Snap needs to do is make a lot of army, because uh, he just needs to defend. his. Uh, he's, he's three bases against two, so he will be able to you know, catch back up and probably go uh, get ahead in terms of the economy. So just got to make sure he needs to, you know, stay safe. He does. He is really behind uh, upgrade, though. He's 2-1 two, two, versus zero, 0 Now, he does have 1-1 one, one on the way, so he should be able to at least, you know, start coming back. So, yeah, that will be important to uh, keep watch on. Yeah, and... I think Snap has this game because the third's not going to be up for a while yet, and I, I honestly don't see a way that um, So can get enough army out to survive. He's down. He's I mean he's equal in workers, but his income is so much lower because of that. And Snap is climbing an army again. He's up about ten supply yet again, and he's getting hive tech as well, or sorry, lair tech. <laughs> no, actually, I think that is oh, high is. tech. I'm right yeah. the first time. Now, I don't like the... I mean, I feel like the creep spread by both players could have been better. I mean, but considering, like, the crazy amount of action that has happened in the early to mid game as well, I guess they just forgot about it. But there is just, like, absolutely no creep spread by So here. Um, it's just now, so, it's not so. the most... Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> oh, that was so stupid. 
Um, <laughs> but anyways, looks like Snap's gonna get another nice concave. And that's sick. Alright, so, yeah, I think right now, with the high tech of Snap, uh, we'll be interested to see what he goes for. Whether he goes for Brewlords or he goes for Ultralist, and it looks like Ultralist will be his tech of choice. Alright, I like that call. And... Now, to... Uh, so is getting a fourth, which is a good call because, you know, you need to try to get ahead while you can. Um, because he's lost so much mining time. But Snap knows that, and since he has a... And he might be able to abuse that with the mobility of his Roach Force. Because it's so hard to cover... Um, I mean, having four bases on Dreamcatcher is such a huge area to cover. Yeah, for sure. This map is so huge. Uh, and you can actually see a lot of uh, Ninja Expands here. Um, just because it's hard to scout all the bases here. Uh, but it looks like, uh, looks like So is going to try to get into the third base of a Snap XD, but the concave of Snap is just really good here. Oh, actually, yeah, just want to be careful with the roaches here. Got a whole position on those roaches. And actually, some somehow, So is up 20 supply. I don't understand. How that happened? Uh, maybe I'll kick it duck. Cause we there we go. That's why. And snap. His defense is kind of falling apart. Well, he hasn't lost too much yet, but he just he has a lot of angles to cover. Yeah, really nice by So to do these double prong attacks. Snap needs to split off his army correctly in order to defend against this. Oh, but it it looks like. Yeah, looks like Snap's army is getting a little bit caught out of position. Uh, he needs to be careful here. Um, yeah, he's... Oh, nice. Now, that was nice play by Snap there. Yeah, that was absolutely need... clutch. Yeah, he needs to buy time for his Hive Tech to kick in. Uh, he's getting Ultralist uh, upgrade, but he needs to actually start making some Ultralist. Instead, he's going to go ahead and just make some extra Roach. Oh, he's supply... Oh, no. Wait, is he? Oh no, he's not supply block. Oh no, he is supply block. So I guess that's right why he hasn't made the Ultralist yet. Um, I'm not sure why. I'm, I'm not sure if Ultralist was the tech of. I mean, the better tech of choice, because you know, with the um, Roach upgrades, you get the range units. You don't get melee, so his Ultralist will be behind in terms of uh, upgrades. But anyhow, let's go ahead and see how this engagement goes. So far, looking good for Snap here. Yeah, at the north side, he defended that really well, and at the um, south side as well, he got a nice concave. So, Snap is the master of concaves, it seems like, in ZVZs. Yeah, and I think I just got to commend him for dealing with this uh, these two-prong harass, because it's difficult to deal with them, especially because you got to make sure you split your uh, army correctly and position them correctly and then micro them uh, you know, simultaneously. So... Well done by Snap for uh, in terms of defending those uh, two prong aggressions. Yeah, exactly. And okay, looks like Snap's trying to make something happen with some roaches up at the old third. Not gonna happen though. And I mean, Snap's down quite a bit of supply somehow, but he keeps taking such great fights that it's it's kind of insane that he's still alive. And like you said, um, you're totally right. It's so hard to deal with that multi prong harass. We did it. And now the Ultralisks are out, and we'll be able to get something done with this. Um, files on both sides not really hitting, but the Ultralisks will be tanks um, in this fight. I feel like uh, Souls are... Oh wait, here we go. Ultralisks finally engaging in the fight. Oh my god, what a concave by Snap here. A little bit of an awkward movement by So here, and oh my god. I think that might have been the uh, turnaround here that Snap needed. Yeah, and all of a sudden, uh, Snap is now enjoying the army supply lead as well as the overall supply lead. 
Yeah, I mean, in all these fights, it's, Snap does not have a supply lead. In fact, he has a deficit. He's just straight up outmaneuvering so every time. Yeah, I think those, yeah, those Tonkis are just deadly here. Uh, but again, Snap does needs to maybe make some bit more drones because he's been stuck at 48 to 64 for, some, for quite some time now. Um, oh, it looks like so transitioned into Mulas. And do we, do we have an anti-air? We don't even have anti-air for Snap. So this might actually be the other turnaround that Soul needed to get back into the game. Yeah, the Mutalus switch is definitely one that's super viable. Now, where are the overlords of Snap is the question. Looks like they're mostly at the natural area, although some are out on the map. Uh, the Mutalus switch could be quite deadly, but I could also see Snap um, pouncing on the third, and that's really the only mining base that he has left. So I think Snap is still in a decent position because he'll have a lot of time to put down spines or spores, excuse me. He's gonna lose a lot right, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that prompted Snap to go ahead and counterattack. And Muta's attacking Ultralis. Good luck with that. That'll take a million years. <laughs> he says, you know what, you're going Muta's, so what? I'm attacking anyways. And. Cleaning up with the Heart of the Swarm Collector's Edition skins for the Ultras. It's going to power through here. And the, all the bases are flashing because Snap has roaches in every single one of them. And this is just going to be a great mechanical win from Snap. Yeah, I got to give him. Give, I got to give, uh, give it to him in terms of the maneuvering of his army. The concaves were sick. And uh, yeah, it looks like Roaches can beat Mutas in a way. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's a brute force. Um, yeah, this is over for so. I mean, it's pretty crazy because ZVZ. Like, supply leads, worker leads, stuff like that are so huge that to see a player just absolutely... He, Snap made that look easy, but that is not easy at all to come back and win fights when you have a supply deficit even. That's pretty insane and gotta give an extra shout out to him there. Yeah. All right. It looks like it's going to be 4-2 to two in terms of the score. Um, and now we are on to our master set. Oh, okay. Got some long games there. Nice. Yeah, we did have a 30 minute game from Zeno, so got to remember that. So, yeah, pretty long. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go ahead and start our master set. Now, the master set is a best of three, so gotta we're going to have to see potentially two to three games here. So yeah, Beardy versus Sal. And it will be on Catalyst, which is probably the most popular map so far in this season. Yeah, it's a good map. Um, it's a pretty standard map, um, unlike Dreamcatcher. It's got a pretty easy to hold third. So in that way, I think, or not easy, but a much more straightforward to hold at least. Um, third base so it plays to more traditional um, styles mm -hmm. but anyhow for the master set for the wait, wait before you overlay. introduce the players uh yeah the overlay <laughs> great <Yeah>. got it <laughs> <laughs> all right so the purple zerg at the top corner of catalyst it is beardy and Spawning at the bottom right, we have our blue Protoss representing Scion, Captain Math. He is a Salivan. Now I gotta say now, this. Um, Salivan has retired from, uh, from being um, the captain training officer this year. 
Um, so everybody, you know, tip your hats to him. He's done a, just an amazing job running uh, the training and of of our players and um, scouting different things like that, helping out. Um, just a really smart guy um, for the last couple seasons in Cyx this year. He does have university, so he's going to be quite busy. So I don't think he's he's not going to be able to continue it this year, but um. Just really appreciate all he's done, and if you see him around, be sure to thank him for all of what he's done. And um, this will most likely be the last time that we see him in TTL for quite a while. Yeah, it's uh, he's been with us for like the past two or three seasons, so has done a lot in terms of uh, CTL participation as well as you know being the training officer. And uh, congrats to him also because he uh, recently won the uh, Cracky the Master Swan. A tournament for, uh, hosted by Cranky Cranky Ducklings. So, uh, congrats to Sal on that amazing win. Yep, and um, also good luck to him in his university. And um, we're moving on, moving on to that stage. So, um, now Sal, I have not watched him in a bit. Um, is he he's is he a Robo or a Stargate player or Twilight? Uh, he, I think he's just in general just a solid macro player. So I mean, he will go. He has, you know, I guess builds with both Stargate openings as well as Robo. So I, but I think he's been going more Stargate recently because uh, I guess most Protoss have been going Stargate recently. So, mm -hmm. um, but it looks like uh, two links will get into the base of Salavath. Oh no, this actually can. Oh no, this doesn't get the wall off. Out. That was rough. Uh, missed the wall up there, and that's gonna be it's gonna be it. Yeah. Oh man. So after like two long games, we have one really short one. And uh, I think us Protoss players have felt that before, has experienced that before, losing to just you know early links like that. Yeah, I think we can all come to the conclusion that Ling rushes need nerfed. <laughs> no, that's a good win from Beardy. Um, you never know. Sometimes you can catch your opponent off guard with that, and that worked. It's got to be. That's a frustrating loss for Sal. I mean, when you lose that quickly, you you got to be tilted a bit. And um, I think it definitely puts you in a tough spot mentality wise in the mind games of the best of three so it's it's tough to come back from a game one loss like that yeah all right spawning at the bottom right we have our purple terran representing a sea swarm it is beardy some strange terran skins there oh yeah i'm just joking because you said terran so i was just joking oh 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 sorry <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> And, Purple in, Zert. and in the top here as the blue Protoss, it's Salavan. Now this is weird. Doesn't the loser pick the next map? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay, because I find this a really odd choice to go on Darkness Sanctuary. I think this is one of the worst map for a Protoss. So I'm surprised Salavan chose Darkness Sanctuary, uh, especially because this is a four spawn player map. So, you know, Zergling rushes are even more stronger because you, you know, you're gonna, there's a possibility you don't scout your opponent as quickly. So, and also just the ramp area is just really hard to, to wall off, I think. So I'm actually curious why he chose this map. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit weird as well. Um, I mean, it is a four-player map, so if, if you like longer macro games, it can be something that is definitely a possibility. Um, maybe, maybe he has something up his sleeve or something, I don't know. Yeah, it's possible. So far, pretty standard gate expand for him. Um, wasn't going anything crazy. And this is a map where Zergs can go for a really fast third. 
Now, fortunately for Sal, he did get the scout on the first try, so that's a pretty big pickup for him. I, I'm glad that this map was in the pool, though, because it kind of... Um, I think a lot of StarCraft 2 players were kind of rusty in the... Uh, it, the uh, how to play the four player map and how the scouting works of that and the different dynamic that that brings so bringing back a traditional four player map I think is something good for the game in general even though uh, for a lot of players it's outside of the comfort zone yeah I think uh, in Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm four, four player maps were definitely much more common during that time uh, although I still I, I, I don't mind it, but I think the, the choke area, the natural area is just a bit awkward to wall off. So maybe um, next season they you know do introduce one that, that, that the uh, map layout in terms of the natural will be um, more conventional. But it looks like Salivant sending his first adept over. We'll go ahead and get some scanning done. Just getting on some notice of the uh, natural, just to check out the drone count, see if there's a lot of drones or little drones that that kind of gives you an indication whether uh, aggression is coming or not. Yeah, and that's a pretty normal timing. That's a pretty normal timing for the um, third hatchery, especially on a four-player map. And yeah, like you said, Sal with the Oracle coming out, the which was not scouted at all and may not be scouted for a bit now the overlord's coming in okay the overlord will see the oracle its path um oh i think yeah the rally was not the best because uh first of all it allowed him to scout it uh, earlier uh and also it, it just delayed the uh, oracle attack now there is no spore cause on yet so these or this oracles actually could have gotten some damage done, but it kind of it's kind of delayed here. Yeah, it might still be able to get a drone or two. Um, already lost its shield. That's a pretty major loss from Sal. Not lost. Uh, yeah. He he didn't get any probes. Not the he didn't get any drones. drones. <laughs> <laughs> Not the end of the world. Um, hopefully he can get something done with his phoenix. Maybe an overlord or two to kind of make up for it. Yeah, but I think that opportunity, I mean, he didn't have any spar calls up, uh, you know, during that time. If he could have, uh, I guess, uh, rallied it correctly and started attacking, he would have gotten like five to six drones by now, I think. And yeah. instead of looking at a, instead of looking at a 45 to 43, we would have been looking at a 45 to like 36 or something or 37. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I think missed opportunity for Sal there. Um, but we'll see what he can get done um, with the Phoenix. Still hasn't been able to do anything with that. He hasn't actually moved out with it. I would like to see him move around and scout with that. Try to get a few overlords. Um, losing a few overlords at this time in the game is actually a pretty big deal because you're, it's, a, it's a decent sacrifice um, in terms of supply and sets your attack and tech back a bit. Now, this is something huge. Salvat is going for carriers. What do you make of this? Oh, yeah. This is the Yen. I guess <clears throat> he got it from, I think, Yen Fu. Right. Um, this is the two base carrier, uh, not two base, a two starport carrier, like Rush. And it's pretty strong. Um, you just got to make sure you, you know, defend so you don't die before you can mass up the carriers. But yeah, it's like really strong build here. So let's see if he can uh, execute it. Yeah, and Beardy doesn't seem to really have any knowledge of this. Yeah, he hasn't scouted it yet. Now, I don't think this is the best map to do it, though, because there's not a lot of airspace that your carriers can hide from or hide in. So I'm not sure if this is uh, the best map to do it on. I think I would prefer that he did it in Callus instead. Maybe he would have done it in Callus, uh, but he died too early in that game. Uh, but it looks like Roche counterattack. Oh my god. He's actually going to have to reveal the carriers, I think, to do this. And he's going to lose a ton of probes. He needs to pull the probes now. Um, the probes are just getting sacked, and the carriers are taking their sweet time getting over here. Lost 10 probes. That's quite huge. And 
carriers are going to reveal on the roaches. This is going to give Beardy all the time in the world to defend this. Oh, and he will get the natural, I mean, the dirt as well. This is such a setback for Salavan. First of all, his carriers are scouted way earlier, and his dirt nexus. That means less gas for his uh, carry production. Uh, and yeah, this is not looking too good for Salavan so far. The Phoenix, um, as well, has just sitting, been sitting idle the entire game. Um, we really would like to see him scout, get some more war kills with that. And the two carriers and Void Rays are pushing their way across the map. Uh, might, most likely will be four carriers, I think, by time Sal attacks. But this is, this is, everything went wrong in Sal's preparation for this attack. And I think there's going to be enough Hydra South that this isn't going to do much at all. Yeah, I think with, you know, with his Oracle, you know, you got to like maybe tag it. Oh no, he's going to lose a carry here. Ouch. Again, this this map doesn't have a lot of airspace, so there's like not really great places to fly or run away from. And this carry, I think, will oh barely just stay alive. I think, maybe. Uh, did the um, definitely will lose. Uh huh. Uh, did the launch interceptors uh, change much? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, I, I've been out of the carry room for a while. But the Void Rays, oh my goodness, the Hydra is just coming up and gunning down the... Oh, no cancel as well. Yeah, I think with uh, with this build, you got to definitely, you know, use your Oracle to tag his army to see if there's any mo army move out, move out before you send out your carrier, so... Kind of unfortunate there, and GG will be forced to sell. Uh, will for be forced to GG, and uh, Birdie will take the best of three series. All right, so that is going to be it. The score is two to five in favor of SC Swarm. Congratulations to them. They played a good series and um, hard fought. We had some good games on both sides. Um, but we did fall this week, and um, this was not a great start for us. Hopefully, we can win this week. It's a, it's pretty crucial that we win if we're going to get into the playoffs. But congratulations to SC Swarm. They've been great um, in this team. And just, yeah, congratulations to them. And really quickly, while everyone is still here, I just want to plug something really quick. Um, I am running a show match series that is going to have the first show match um, the first show match is going to be, I can't post links anymore. I can't <laughs> post links. Okay. Um, that's all right. Anyways, I'll, p I'll post the link on the thing in just a minute, but basically it's a show match and you can go to this website on Matcherino and you can donate 50 cents to the prize pool as well as a couple other, you know, small things to it for free. And you know what? Let me try to get it here. It'll take only a second. But um, if I'd really appreciate if people could donate to that. Let me try to get it here. One second. Is there a code you enter? Yes, or? there's a code. Um, you go to this website, which I will have in 30 seconds, and enter the code Summer Brood War. Summer BW1. And should be it. Sorry. All right. Yeah, you second. can type, type the uh, code into the uh, Twitch chat as well so that people can. Uh... I tried. It deleted my link. Let's see. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, I see the Match Reno link in the Twitch chat. So. Oh, did it not get deleted? Yeah, I mean, I see it. Uh, I'm not sure if the others, the viewers see it though. Okay, I'll just put it on the... Okay. No, no. Let me go ahead and paste that, see if that works. Hopefully you uh, can see in the uh, Twitch chat the link. All right, so I, I just... just... And I just put it up on the, um, the screen there so you guys can see that. But anyways, if you go on to there and use the code SUMMER 
BW1. Um, no spaces, no caps. You can donate to the prize pool for free. And that's I really appreciate you guys' help with that. There's also some cool merch the, um, companies that are partnering with it. And if you get some merch like a Matrino mouse pad for $10, um, 100% of that will go directly into the prize pool for the players. So if you guys can take just 30 seconds out of your time to do that, I would much appreciate that. And um, that would mean a ton to me. So thank you guys for that. And um, yeah, but moving back to the CTL, I just want to congratulate everybody again. Thanks to all our players for playing and everybody for watching. And if Snoopy, you have any final words before we close this out? Uh, just want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. And yeah, congrats to the SC2, I mean, SC Swarm and all the players uh, that played in week two. And hopefully we can uh, bounce back in week three. Yeah, we're going to be trying really hard to, um, like you said, come back, win it, hopefully be playoff contenders. And um, we'll be appreciating all your guys' um, luck for that. All you guys wishing you luck. Good sports. And, um, yeah, hope everybody has a really good night. And we'll be seeing you next week or this week, maybe later, with another CTL replay cast. All right, take it easy, guys. Yeah.